last night on The Bachelor. Today is a most important day, and for some, a terrifying one. For today is the day London's marriage-minded missus are presented to Her Majesty the Queen. Miss Abigail Herringer. Flawless, my dear. But as we know, the brighter a lady shines, the faster she may burn. A new season has begun, and with it comes a new jewel of the season, bequeathed with the first impression rose, which, on this show at least, is unfortunately the kiss of death. So, will Abigail be wrought with scandal? Will the Duke of Nemecolon ever find love? Did I binge-watch Bridgerton over the Christmas break? You tell me, dear readers. So it's time for another Night One recap, and of course, as per usual, at the end of the video I will be dishing out my Night One Top 4, Top 2, and Final Pick for the season. So let's not waste any more time, and if you're new here, the rules are simple. No posting outright spoilers in the comment section below, but sleuthing is always welcome and encouraged. I was hoping to pass the torch to you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nope, the video isn't broken, I didn't start halfway through the episode, this is exactly how the season begins. With a contestant walking out of the limo and showing Matt her vibrator. And tuning in at 8 o'clock, I wasn't sure if there was a mistake or if I got the time wrong and was coming into the episode an hour late. It really felt out of place and I was wondering what the heck kind of opening was that? Not sure how that got approved, apart from some intern coming up with the idea and Chris Harrison going, This man is a genius. A genius. You think so? <laughs> no, I don't think so. I know so. But throw that intro out of your mind, we're here at Nemecolon and... Dang. Dang. Bit of an upgrade from La Quinta. Sorry, Taisha, we have to do your season in a Motel 6, but don't worry. Come host a group date on The Bachelor. We'll be filming at Buckingham Palace. And right off the bat, we're going to be introduced to Matt James, the new Bachelor who's not from any previous season. He was meant to be on Claire's season, but in July, was announced as the Bachelor instead. Matt's a commercial real estate broker from New York who also works with a charity helping homeless and underprivileged kids. We also meet his mom, who's rocking tiger stripes and leather pants, and I can only assume she'll be living on the resort and pulling pranks on the ladies. Speaking of, it's time for intro segments. Starting with ballet dancer Alicia, who's just casually heading down the hallway to fill up her ice bucket. There's Abigail, who's coming in with a bachelor first. So I was born completely deaf, so if I take my cochlear implant off, I can't hear anything. It's kind of an awkward thing to bring up, like on a first date. Then there's Kristen, an attorney, because, well, it's not a season of The Bachelor without one. Maggie here is originally from Ethiopia. I am originally from Ethiopia. I was born and raised there. I just moved to the States nine years ago to get my doctorate in pharmacy. Okay, what is she doing on this show? Don't you dare mess with her, Bachelor producers. Don't you dare. There's Anna, who if the Hannah Brown and Kaylin feud from Colton season had spawned a child, it would be her. I'm totally like chill about this whole situation until I start thinking about it too much and then I'm like, holy and then I get a rash. And Sarah here was a former broadcast journalist who moved closer to home to be with her father, who has ALS. But the real introductions are yet to come, as these women have finished their quarantine and it's time to get ready for night one. First to arrive, though, is of course Matt, who goes to sit down with Chris Harrison to discuss the journey ahead, especially with him as the new lead. Another thing I wanted to talk to you about was pressure that I put on myself just being the first black bachelor. In what way? Did, did Chris Harrison say, in what way? Well, here, Matt primarily discusses people's expectations. Expectations about who he finds love with, or how. I don't want to piss off black people. I don't want to piss off white people. Yeah. But I'm both of those, you know what I mean? It's yeah. like, how do I please everybody? And Chris Harrison's advice is to just search for your joy. If you come out of this with love, with a partner, and with joy, then you'll never look back at anything with regrets. Oh, and speaking of... Well, have you ever been in love? I don't know, Chris Harrison. Take a look at some of these pictures and you tell me. You tell me. Knowing what I know now and what it means to love and be loved, I think I'm ready to offer that to somebody. 
I've been running from it for a long time, and I'm, I'm done running. All right, you heard the man. He's ready. I'm ready. Let's get those limos out here. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How are you? How you doing? First lady out is Bree. And I always clock the first one out of the limo because usually that means there's someone the producers think the lead will like. And right off the bat, we're not getting any gimmicks, just serious intros. Which is generally how this always goes. We get gals like Rachel who get their cute moment. I'm so nervous. Can you feel me shaking? Yeah, I'm shaking a little bit too though. <laughs> I could. I just wanted to say that you're the reason I'm here. And I love that we get to do this whole thing for the first time together. Or Chelsea who wins the award for most tape used to keep up a dress tonight. And I don't know, Matt has this sort of tendency to say such wonderful things to these women, but only as they're walking away. Wow. She is wearing that dress. Wow, she was incredible. She was beautiful. You ever meet somebody and you just don't know what to say? I would never say this to her face, but she is a wonderful person and a gifted artist. Why, why wouldn't you say that to her face? Eventually, the gimmicks start to slowly come out. Starting with the cute ones like Serena P and her step stool, then moving on to the less traditional. I think you are the greatest of all time. Thank you. And I hope you'll also think that I'm the goat. <laughs> okay, what am I talking about? Strange costume gimmicks are very traditional on this show. Then Alana comes in with the Lady in the Tramp move to nab the first kiss of the season, but the ballsiest move of the night goes to Kaylee, who didn't have enough time to pick out her dress, so she's getting Matt to do it for her. Kind of like the strapless. Okay. Yeah, I like that. I mean, like, she is literally in bra and underwear. At least she has a robe on. Now, apparently, there was a woman, Savannah from Peter's season, who was asked by the producers to do the same thing, and she said no. So before you go thinking this was all Kaylee's idea, know that. Up next is Abigail. I'm deaf, mm -hmm. so I'm gonna be reading your lips a lot tonight. Okay. But thankfully you have really beautiful lips, so I'm not <laughs> complaining. And after that, we start flying through the entrances. Cause there are a lot of women coming out and there's only so much time in the night. We do stop a bit for MJ and her pizza box, Katie, who's fitting to get this video demonetized, Kimberly, who throws <laughs> Matt a fish, oh. And yeah, things are starting to get a bit weird. Can I put my balls in your mouth? So what do you think of my balls? Not bad. They're my meatballs. What the? You've been meatballed. <laughs> oh. Are you ready for some meatball? Oh, man. <laughs> then there's the youngest of the season, 21-year-old Kit, who looks like it'd take about five moves for her to beat me in chess. Kit is also the daughter of fashion designer Cynthia Rowley, which is weird considering Kit decided to walk out of the limo wearing what appears to be a dead Muppet. And last but not least, the grandest entrance of them all is saved for Queen Victoria. <laughs> oh man. So I'm Victoria like the queen. I see that. <laughs> and with that, all the women are in. Kate taps on her drink with her friend MJ, and we're ready to officially start the mingling. But unlike Kate and MJ, or what is traditionally done by the lead at this point, a toast, Matt decides to start the season with a prayer. Bless this time we have together, Father, in your holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. That was so good. Oh, and that had most of these women going. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and he's a Christian. <laughs> Especially Rachel, who seems really affected. That just rocked me. I'm like not okay after that. Hi, that's so Yay, sweet. That is sweet. Are you religious? And I'm pointing this out because this wasn't a one-off shot of her because she gets emotional. We stay with her for a solid minute and then cut to another segment of her for an extended period of time. He's pretty much everything like I expected him to be and more, so... Yeah, I'm excited though. I hope I get some time with him. What I'm saying is the editors didn't need to do this if they just wanted to convey that the women liked the prayer. When we talk examples of good night one edits, this is primo stuff. Because you gotta think the reason they're doing this for Rachel is because one, she's going far, two, she's going to be a big part of this episode, or three, she's getting the first impression rose. But for now, let's move on to the sit-down chats. And first up is Sarah, who gets off to a good start, but Matt keeps saying he's so nervous. 
Sarah's great. The first person I spoke to, but I felt like I was kind of like a robot. I'm, I'm still like in this like nervous mode. And it's for many reasons. One of which is the responsibility of being the first Black Bachelor, as he discusses with Kristen. But it's also because he wants to live up to these ladies' expectations. And just when he says he's ready to take on that challenge, guess who it cuts to? I just loved the fact that you haven't been through this before, yeah. and so I yeah. loved the thought of like going through this whole thing together. We also get a lot of hand-holding shots, extended footage, Matt's ITMs that are just about her, Things are looking really solid for Rachel. Next to get some time with Matt is Serena P, who's pulled Matt aside to play a romantic game of chess. Hmm, these things can go like that. Yep. All right. Wow, brilliant move. Matt's already stuck here. So he pops a green pill, stares at the ceiling, and goes through every possible move and scenario in his head until he figures out the only way to defeat her. Can you do that? Brilliant. Now, of course, as the night goes on, it wouldn't be a proper first episode of The Bachelor without some interruptions. The most unique of which goes to Katie. With these last earthquakes, you know, my mom was like, hey, hey, hi, oh my God. Do you mind if I uh, sneak in here? <laughs> yep, that happened. We're living in this reality now, but it really gets weird when Katie and MJ get interrupted by MJ. Hi. Hi. Sorry, um, MJ number one wants to step in. I'm gonna oh, have you. if you didn't know, this is um, MJ. Okay, I need to know, was this a coincidence? Because if not, that's some mean girl stuff right there. Naming it MJ. And this wasn't the only interruption of the night. Excuse hey. me, princess, but the queen is here. Okay. I mean, oh my gosh. Princess? Calling me princess? Calling it now, a Victoria Kit two-on-one is in the works. So the night moves on, and of course Chris Harrison brings out that first impression rose to add some pressure to the night. Especially considering a few of these ladies haven't had time with Matt yet. Luckily, all the other women are really respectful and want to make sure that everyone has a turn with Matt before- How are you? Can I interrupt you guys? Um, <gasps> Victoria's still in again. Oh my god. Yeah, because Victoria's already gone. And in this moment, the villain of the season was crowned. Queen Victoria. May her reign last two to three episodes. And if you're a vet of this franchise, you'll know that now, the other women are going to be quick to turn on Victoria. Yes, partially because of that extra time, but also because of stuff like this. I do marketing. Well, market yourself to Matt. What? Like, market yourself to Matt. I don't feel bad going to see Matt twice because they're idiots anyway. Now here it's almost time to give out that first impression rose. But just before we get there, we have two more extended sit-downs to talk about. One with Bree. It feels right talking to him because I just forgot about everything else. Everything flows so naturally. A great night one edit segment right there. And then there's Abigail, who has a super cute conversation with Matt. You were gorgeous and it was hard to focus <laughs> Did on Did you see me hit else. the car door when I walked out? No, I didn't. Okay, I didn't, thank God. No, I didn't even okay. catch that. I was just staring at your eyes. I mean. We then get some more of those hand-holding shots, more smiles, and eventually, Matt goes in for this. I'm glad you're the bachelor. And so, Matt goes to grab the first impression rose, Queen Victoria is pissed, and the first impression rose goes to... Abigail. Abigail? Will you accept this rose? Oh my god, I will! <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, that also means Abigail is doomed. On The Bachelor, and I mean The Bachelor, not The Bachelorette, the first impression rose almost always leads to heartbreak. Also, Abigail is completely absent from the previews. Like, really. So as cute as this was, and as much as I stand this, the outlook is grim. But with the handing out of the first impression rose, there's nothing left to do but head right into the first rose ceremony of the season. And as the rose ceremony goes on, there are two things of note. One, that some diabolical producer is getting a raise for thinking to put the two girls with the same dress together like this. Atlanta. Did you say Anna? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and two, that this rose ceremony is coming down to whether or not Queen Victoria is getting a rose. Victoria. Yay. Thank you. And with that, 
Her Reign Lives On, and Ballerina Alicia, Imani, Goatfoot Lady, Amber, Corinne, Carolyn, Cassandra, and Kimberly are headed home. The rest of the gang then toasts, and our night one comes to an end. But before we go, it's time to dish on my final picks for the season. And this is a rather unusual situation, as we know that more women are going to show up later on. All that is told in the latest preview from the end of the episode, including the addition of former contestant Never Been Kissed, or Now Been Kissed, Heather from Colton Season. So it's possible that new preview footage may emerge when they show up that changes the game. We'll also be able to see more clearly what their edits are like, so keep that in mind. But for now, based off Night 1 and the previews we've seen so far, my top four are, starting with the fourth pick, Rachel. Her edit this episode was stellar, and the fact that she got this kind of edit without being an important part of the episode, and by that I mean she didn't get the first impression rose or cause a bunch of drama, mixed with her presence in some of the preview footage, has edged her into the fourth spot. Next, at third spot, is Serena P. She's featured a ton in the previews, including a section where she says she's falling for Matt. She was steadily present in this episode, and for that, she's slotting in at number three. Which leads me to my number two pick, Brie. Just a steady presence with a great edit, and possibly a shot of her in a fantasy suite situation from the previews. And lastly, my final pick, Queen Victoria- nah, just kidding. My final pick is, strangely enough, someone not present night one. That person is Michelle. Of all the women in this season, she is the most present in the previews and has a ton of evidence to support her going the distance. I'll detail more of my reasoning in the preview breakdown tomorrow, but remember, things could change once she arrives. But my gut is telling me it won't. She'll receive a fantastic edit, and certainly, even though she's not there night one, she's had the strongest preview presence of anyone. She's my current final rose pick. So that's it for this night one recap. I hope you enjoyed it, and be sure to like and subscribe for more content as we break down each week and each preview for the season. As I said, I'll talk a bit more about my top four in the preview breakdown tomorrow, so until then, Bachelor Fantake, out. You've been meatballed. <laughs> oh. Are you ready for some meatballs? Oh, man. <laughs>